Hi friends, welcome. I'm Andy Lee and this is the Bite of Bread. It's weekly nourishment for your soul. So come on in, grab your hot tea, your decaf, get your Bible, your journal, stretch your pants, and we will dig down deep together to find the word, to find the truth, to find the life that's going to set us free. Hey, tonight we're talking about worrying and um, how we can let go of worry and become a warrior in prayer. So, <laughs> two words hard to say, so say that three times fast. Warrior, from being a warrior to a warrior. Hey, Tina and Karen, good to see y'all tonight. Amy Lynn, I'm glad you could join me. Yay! So, let's pray. Let me pray us up. While we're waiting on people to get on, we're going to prepare our hearts and our spirits for what God has for us tonight. So I'll hold my hands. Father, we praise you and love you and worship you. You are good. Lord, you are kind. You are wisdom. And you can see what we can't see. You see into the future, God, and and you've got good plans for us. And I just claim that scripture in Jesus' name, that that's your personality, your character. You want good things for all of those who are coming on tonight and watching. You have good things. So for those who are really struggling, Lord, tonight with worry and anxiety, I pray that something within this message Something in the word that we uncover will bring freedom, will bring release, will bring breakthrough. In Jesus' name, we pray for those windows, windows of heaven to be opened for freedom. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Hi, Karen. Good to see you tonight. Oh, my friends, how are you doing? We have been hanging in here how long now? Six weeks? Has it been six weeks since we've been at home? I'm not supposed to go out and do anything, but I do think there's light at the end of the tunnel. So, how are you doing with this? Are you worrying? Are you anxious? Are you struggling? Are you feeling God's peace during this time? Let me some comments. Let me know how you're doing, Mary Beth. It's good to see you. So tonight, we are going to be talking about exchanging our worry to become a warrior in, a, in prayer. And I could sit here and tell you that the Bible tells you over and over and over not to worry, but I know you probably already know that. Hey, Dev Warren, good to see you. So I'm, I really don't want to make us feel bad about worrying. It's just part of who we are and what we do. But I want to empower us and give us some scripture that's going to help us exchange this worry. So um, hopefully you've gone to my website, wordsmyintylean.com. And on the website, there's an article you can read that has more on this. And there's a Bible um, reading plan that has seven scriptures and seven prompts to those scriptures. And those prompts um, help you apply the scriptures to your life. Hi, Lori. I'm glad you could join us tonight. So tonight, we're going to go through some of these scriptures, but really focus on one particularly. And that is 1 Peter 5, 6 through 9. We're really going to dig into that scripture. But before I do that, I just felt like I needed to read some of these scriptures. Just let you hear some of these scriptures. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So that one has the, the secret, the key to Philippians 4, 6, and 7. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But he tells us to, in every situation, to give our prayers up with thanksgiving. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Allie. Good to see you. So thanksgiving is a, um, a key. It's a key to unlock that peace of God. Have you, have you experienced that? 
Have you experienced the peace of God that made no sense at all? If you have, raise your hand, give me some hearts, leave a comment if you've experienced that peace of God because those of us who had not need to know that it's out there. And one of the keys to finding that peace is being thankful. I just got through reading Corrie Ten Boom's book again, The Hiding Place, because my eighth graders have been reading that. And oh, it's such a powerful book. If you need a good read, during this time of quarantine, um, you need to get it. It's it's a wonderful book to read, um, to remind us of God's faithfulness and all that He had He He does. But um, one of one of the stories um, in that book, they are in this terrible concentration camp. They've gone to the the worst one, the dreaded one. I can't remember which one it was, the name of it. Um, somebody may know here. Hey, Kim Anders made it. Good to see you, Kim. So Betsy and Corey are in this terrible concentration camp, and uh, there are fleas all over their room, all over their beds. It's awful, and and Corey is like, ah, oh, you know, is having a fit about it. And Betsy, who always finds something good in everything, um, is saying. We've got to pray. We just pray. We need to thank God for these fleas. And Corey's like, what? Where are we going to thank God for these fleas? These fleas were awful. Yes. <laughs> Ravensbrook, you're right. Good job, Karen. Okay, so they've got these fleas, and they find out later. Hi, Pat Duby. They find out later that the fleas kept the guards from coming into that dormitory, and therefore they were able to have Bible study, to read their Bible, to share with others, to pray with others. It really protected them because of those fleas. So if you are struggling with worries, if you are worrying and um, you're in a bad situation, there's this key called Thanksgiving finding being thankful in the midst of it that God is going to use it for good um, but that can bring us peace John 14 27 peace I leave with you Jesus says this to his disciples peace I leave with you my peace I give you I do not give to you as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid now, he was saying this to his disciples before he was going to be taken off and, and, and crucified and died. And um, he was telling them, this is going to happen, but don't be troubled. I got it. Don't be afraid. Peace, I leave with you. My peace. So some of us really need God's peace right now. I know you need this peace. And I pray tonight. As we go through these scriptures and we start breaking down, especially First Peter, where you, you're going to get to that place of peace. Good to see you, Kristen. So, my peace I give you. That was John 14, 27. You know, Jesus doesn't give to us like the world gives to us. He says that. The world always expects something in return. The world, um, nothing's free, right? But with Jesus... His peace is free. All he, all it requires is our trust, because you can't, you can't find peace if you're not trusting him. So, Lord, help me trust you in this situation. Psalm fifty-five twenty-two: Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. So the word righteous, we think of it being right with God, and so we think that as a person who doesn't do anything wrong. But the word righteous is not only being right with God, but when we're right with God, we also are right with, our men, with fellow men, right? Love God with all your heart and deliver your neighbor as yourself. So that righteous person is this person who's, well, we've got the blood of Christ on us, thank goodness, but also have this generous heart, love for other people and our neighbors and reaching out. And when we're doing that, you know, sometimes we get so focused on our own issues that we forget to look out and help other people. But when we start doing that, we start helping other people, our, our burdens lift. And uh, I believe we will experience 
God's peace, we'll experience his provision as we share with others. It's biblical. I'm not going to stay there tonight. I'm going on to Psalm 20, verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God, who do trust in, trusting in the name of Yahweh. Study his names. If you're struggling with anxiety, um, do a word study on the names of God and begin to pray those names. I've got a, um article on that on my website, wordsbyandylee.com. So you can go, if you go all the way to the bottom, to the foot um, footer, you can see, find the search bar and you can type in the names of God and pull up that article. And it, I teach you how to pray the names of God. Okay, now I'm to the scripture I want to go to tonight to really dig in deep. And that scripture is 1 Peter 5, 6 through 8. So if you've got your Bible and, and you want to read, read with me. Um, humble yourselves. Uh, first of all, let me give you context. So Peter is talking to the church and he's telling, he's told the elders what they need to do. And he's specifically talking to the younger men and he's told them to be humble and to um, to listen to their elders, be submissive to them. And, the, and that brings them to 1 Peter 5, 6. He says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Let me talk about humility just for a little bit. And how do we do this? How do we do humility? Well, you know what? I think when we are worried and anxious, we have put it all on us. And we're going to talk about putting it on him but we are carrying it. We are in our own thing, and we can do it. <laughs> we um, That causes us to be anxious and worried. I like to get on my knees every morning. I get on my knees, not because I'm all that, but because I'm not all that, because I need the Lord. And when I'm on my knees in front of Him, I just picture myself in front of him and I just pray for forgiveness for what I've done and thank him for his forgiveness and I can give him my request and I'm humble on my knees and I know that's not possible for everybody physically to do. If you can, I highly recommend it. And if you can't, maybe you can do it on your bed or maybe it's just a heart posture, but some way that you get on your knees before the Lord humble yourself. So if you're struggling with anxiety and you're struggling with worry, I believe this is a key. This is something that can help. Humble yourself, if, um, therefore, under God's mighty hand. He's mighty, y'all. He's strong. He's amazing. He is God, and we are not. He's got the whole picture. He can see everything. So we can trust him with that. So humble under his mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time when it's done he will lift you up to stay humble then cast all your anxiety on him okay so that word cast literally means to throw something on something so to throw it on him so if you can do that in your mind just just picture yourself taking all your worries and your anxieties and, and transferring them from your shoulders because you're the one trying to hold them and putting them over on Jesus, on his shoulders. He said, give them to me. I want them. Cast all your anxiety on him because, because, this is the key, my friends, because he cares, because he cares for you. Some of us, that's a hard thing to get. Lord, help me understand, help me get, help me believe that you really do care for me. Some of us don't believe that. I'm praying right now that you will understand and know how much he cares for you. The word anxiety in the Greek, it's really interesting. The word anxiety here um, in the Greek. So the definition I read said that it is through the idea of distraction. Ooh -hoo -hoo. So that's huge to me. What are, what's anxiety? What, what are anxious thoughts and worries about? They are distraction. They distract us from doing what God has purpose for us to do, such a time as this. When we are worried and we are distracted and we let those anxious thoughts take over, 
we are going to miss what God has for us. They are distractions. And I pray that that is one truth, that that is maybe the number one truth tonight. If you don't get anything out of this, I want you to chew on the thought of anxiety and anxious thoughts and worries being distractions from the enemy, that the enemy doesn't want you to be able to do what you could be doing, which would be one thing might be being a prayer warrior and praying about all that's going on. But instead, we're just really worried about the circumstances that we're in rather than looking outward and praying and praying and praying God's will and praying, you know, kingdom here, praying those prayers, praying for the virus to be gone in the name of Jesus, praying for the economy, praying for the government, pray, praying, 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 praying. How many of us have not taken that time? I'm one of them to really be making a difference at such a time as this because of all the distractions of the worries and the anxieties um, that we have. So distraction, anxiety is a worry. So he says, cast all your worries, all your distractions on him because he cares for us. Number two, that's got that's our number two um, truth tonight. That this, I believe, can change your can shift everything if you really can get to that belief and that faith and that trust that he cares for you, that he really loves you, and he has good plans for you. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Um, and then, oh, I'm going on to verse 9. So First Peter 5, uh, verse 9, he says, this is another truth that I think can set us free. He says, resist him standing firm in the faith. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I missed verse 8. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, lion looking for someone to devour. Okay, here we go. I told you he's distracting us. He's trying to distract us with the worries and the anxiety and the anxious thoughts. Um, and he's this roaring lion. I heard this great sermon. It's probably the one sermon that I really remember of all the sermons I've heard in my life. And a youth pastor taught it. And it was about this scripture. And he said, that lion has no teeth. He, is, he has no teeth at all. He just can roar. He just makes a lot of noise. He just talks a lot. Um, and that is such a powerful image to me. But if we are listening to his roars, we're going to be anxious and we're going to be worried. And it says he can devour us. He's going to do <laughs> Have you ever been devoured in worry and anxiety? Have you ever? Just Is it just just taking you over. I believe many of us have experienced that before. So this says be self-controlled and alert. And that word alert, um, it signifies this deep sense of certainty and importance of things invisible and eternal, just alert, aware of there's more going on here than what I can see. I, I've prayed often, Lord, Give me eternal vision in this. Give me eternal vision in this life, in this season, in this moment. I need eternal vision. So be self-controlled and aware, alert, not only of what's going on around here, but of the eternal um eternal vision of what's going on because the devil paws around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist, verse 9, resist him standing firm in the faith because this is huge. This is the third, third um, truth that I think can set us free from worry. Because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Did you hear that? You are not alone. You are not alone. So of the truths that I think can be freeing from our worry and our anxiety, number one, they are distractions. They are not, they're not reality. They might be reality. But they are distracting us 
if we are trying to fix them and, and worry about them, that's what we do with our worries and anxieties, right? So they're distracting us and keeping us from God's best and from what He has for us to do at the moment. That God cares for us. That was the second thing. The third thing is that you are not alone. There are other people out there going through the same things you are going through, or even worse, that they are suffering too. I think that is a huge, huge um, reality that can free us from our worries. Loneliness, and I write about this in my article um, on, on my website, is loneliness. I know I've been there for loneliness can just... It makes the anxiety and the worry even worse because we're just all by ourselves, right? We're all by ourselves thinking about those thoughts. Um, so if we realize that we're not the only one going through it, we start praying for those other people. We start reaching out, oh Lord, who can I call today and, and give them some encouragement today? Or who do I need to go drop something by to? Who do I need to write a note to? Who can I help today, Lord? Show me who to pray for. When we start doing that and we realize we're not alone, those anxieties and those worries, I promise, will begin to dissipate. Um, so Tina says Proverbs 12, 25 is a great scripture too. So the fourth thing, and I just love the rest of this scripture, it says in verse 10, And the God of all grace, listen, and the God of all grace, I love the word grace, who called you to his eternal glory. He's called you. He's chosen you. You're listening to me right now. You are called and you are chosen. Hi, Elsie Upton. You are called and you are chosen. The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while, and we're all going to suffer a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong. You know what I love about that? That means I've had a moment of being weak, and it was okay, because God in his time is going to restore me and make me strong. I just need to hold on. I just need to hold on. I just need to stand fast. I just need to... Keep on having faith and trusting he cares, he's good, he's kind, he's working it out, he's working it out, and he's got it, and I, he's got a purpose for me in the process, and in his time, he is going to make us strong. You know, a lot of, the, this is, I feel like the last few weeks when I've taught, we've come on these scriptures that are being strong, that are talking about being strong. You need to be strong. But really what they mean is to be strengthened, to let the Lord strengthen you. This is another scripture where it says that the Lord will make you strong. You don't have to do it. I don't have to do it. We can't do it. But He can, His Holy Spirit, by His presence, He will make us strong, firm, and steadfast, to him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Do you struggle with feeling like you're not strong in your faith or steadfast enough in your faith? Can I just can I just release you from that right now? And yes, we have our our um our role of stepping into trusting God, but then he is he's got his his faithful role of the Holy Spirit coming in as we surrender to Him, as we ask for more of Him every day. He fills us. He strengthens us. He can give us that peace. He can give us that purpose. We are not alone. We have one another, and we have Holy Spirit. We have Jesus present with us. Amen, amen. I pray that those truths, those truths will set you free tonight from worry and from anxiety. I want to close tonight with the last scripture on the bite of bread. Psalm 23, 4 says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They're with me. 
They strengthen me. So my prompt was, are you going through a dark valley? Ask the Lord to help you feel his presence. Get up early one morning and go see a sunrise. As far as I know, nobody has told us we can't do that. So if you need to go see a sunrise, go remember that his sunrise comes up every day. It's a faithful rem reminder of God's faithfulness, of his power, of his beauty and all that he's doing, that he is still on the throne. Hold my hand and let me pray you up, Lord. Thank you so much for this word tonight. Lord, I pray that there, there were words spoken, that the scripture, that where we, we reached down underneath passage translation, brought life and truth and breath to the word, and that that brought freedom, um, the stronghold of worry and anxiousness, that it be broken in Jesus' name, that peace and freedom and purpose would reign in our lives, Lord. You sit on the throne. You fill us up every day as we surrender to you. We trust you, and we trust that you do care for us. Lord, thank you for everyone watching. Please bless them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. Fill them with your presence. And thank you, Jesus, that you are our God and you are good. It's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Bless me with your presence. Lori, I'm, I'm so glad that you could join us tonight. And y'all can go to Words by Andy Lee and read the whole article. Get the Bible Bread Reading Plan. There'll be a new one up on Sunday. You can go to my YouTube channel. It's Andy Lee Bible. It's what you can put in Google search and it will come up. Um, subscribe. Give me some likes and thumbs up. Share this with anybody. If this helped you, then share it with some friends. Share it on Facebook. Thanks so much for joining. Um, God bless you. Go out there and be a threat to that roaring lion, lion as you trust the Lord, as you cast your anxieties on him and you don't let those anxious thoughts distract you anymore. Have a great night. Bye.